Hello everyone, welcome back to another tactics video on the channel. I'm Ash as always and today we are doing another career mode tactics video. We've already done one on my Chelsea career mode tactics from the Chelsea series so do go and check that out if you haven't done so already and today I want to finally give you guys a full breakdown of the tactic that I've been using on my Ajax career mode live stream series. Uh, that series has now finished. We've got a, it was about seven live streams all in all. I got through a couple of seasons of that. So if you haven't gone and checked that out already, please do go and give it a look. Really enjoyed doing it. A lot of people tuned in and interacted with the series. It was great fun. Uh, so do go and have a look. Now today I want to talk about the actual systems themselves. Uh, what we've been using this 433 uh, just give a little breakdown of it really before i do that just quickly want to say if you haven't done so already make sure to go and check out my patreon if you want to see the full rating on this tactic uh sort of suitable teams to play as strengths and weaknesses all that good stuff then do go and check out my patreon you can find the fifa 23 tactics package on there as well as behind the scenes videos exclusive tactics videos discord server access and all that good stuff as well as checking out all of my other series my video games podcast for example my chelsea career mode series Ajax live stream series, of course. All the links are in the description and in the uh, comments section down below. With that being said, let's talk about it. So we wanted to recreate and really keep to those principles of Ajax. That club has been very much at the forefront of this total football vertical possession system um, and that style all the way back from obviously of course the 70s and beyond um, and so we wanted to stick to that and this is what we were really looking to do we wanted to find a system also that suited the players we had at our disposal now as you can see there have been a couple of transfer changes we did sell a couple of players we signed a couple but very much sticking to the principles of the personnel that we needed so it was a 4-3-3 that we went with there were a few position changes starting off with the defense uh, we had the right back at base fullback but then the left back we changed to wing back what we were looking to do is we wanted to create a numerical overload on that left hand side but with the right back we wanted him to be an inverted fullback similar and you're going to see some elements of the kind of man city system that we did cover uh, earlier in the uh, year um and so it's it's similar here in that mold. Now, also the reason why we had the right back is what we're going to come on to next. And that is that with Steven Berghaus here, we changed him to a Ram. That was a right attacking midfielder. And so what you're looking for here is the reason why we wanted to hit the right back as the inverted fullback was because with him being a cam, it offers more protection for him on that right hand side. Whereas if you did this on the left hand side, uh, all of a sudden you're going to have the numerical overload on the right hand side with a wing back and the cam etc um but then you're going to be exploited by the opposition on the counter attack so we kept tried to supplement that really and try to balance it out each side uh, and we also of course had the wingers and the striker etc so a couple of position changes there and then tactically um we have a balanced game plan and something i kept making changes every time we were trying to press for a goal late on in the game um, but i never actually set it to an attacking game plan so i have now so i'll show you how it tweaks a little bit with the attacking game plan but balanced defensive style was press after possession loss trying to maintain that stamina as much as possible it's also important to note that we had a lot of possession in the majority of our games we really spearheaded possession you've got to value the ball you've got to look after it lots of one and two touch so you shouldn't be needing to press a lot. You shouldn't be out of possession a lot. Um, with the width, that was on 30, giving us the smallest amount or the lowest we could have before it went into a narrow system, just to help with that press a little bit. Also, we have a very physically superior defence. As you can see, the pace is, is quite scary, really, um, even on the bench and stuff, the likes of Sanchez and that. You know, we had fast defenders. And so they were able to kind of cover any ground and any gaps that we could leave. Similar to that is with the depth. That was on 90, a very high line, ultra high line. And it was, again, a similar situation, really. The, the fast centre-backs allowed us to play that and could still track any runs in behind as well. Offensively, we had the build-up play on slow build-up, again, allowing us to play out from the back and play through the thirds. And then the chance creation was on possession, trying not to make it so counter-attacking orientated. You know, as can you can easily kind of get lured into that on FIFA because it's such a counter-attack heavy game and it doesn't value possession very highly. And that's what we're trying to do. We're just trying to get players show for the ball more, really try and build up through the thirds um, and allow for a more vertical possession system. The whip was on 10 
really compressing the entire team, but also the midfield. Now, in order to get the width, you'll see what we actually did. Uh, we had to alter the player instructions. So do bear that one in mind as well. Uh, players in the box was on seven, giving us roughly three to four players in the box. It would usually be the likes of the front three and Berghaus. Or Berghaus would be in there when one of the wingers was crossing the ball in or cutting back, etc. So we had a nice balance there. The corners and free kicks, both of these were on four. Do bear in mind, I did a lot of short corners though, and they were very, very... Uh, good very effective uh, so do try them out as well see if you can work any sort of set piece routines from the short corners that's what i try to do try to mix things up sometimes you take the man on when you go short sometimes you go cross it in straight away you go back to the corner taker you put it out to the edge of the box there's a whole range of directions that you could go with that with the player instructions then with the keeper we had one comes across these as i say in all the tactics videos they are what you should use um, it's just going to relieve that pressure off you as much as possible, really. And then also sweeper keeper as well. Again, it doesn't work overly well, but we do set it to that anyway, just to obviously supplement that high line that we was playing. Um, and then with the two centre-backs, I had Bassi on normal inceptions, and then I had uh, St. Juiced, or as was Timber, on aggressive inceptions. Now, I would actually, if I was you, make an adjustment here. I would actually change this back to normal inceptions, you found that his stamina was draining too much and you wasn't getting enough of an upside in order to justify that in the first place. So for me, I would now change this to normal inceptions. Obviously, you guys can do as you please, um, but my advice to you would be to, to just stick it to the default setting. Uh, with the fullbacks then, the inverted fullback, as you can see here, run type on inverted and then attacking runs was stay back while attacking to enable us to recreate that inverted fullback role as much as we could, helping to form a back three. Um, and then with back air, who is of course a left wing back, his run type was on overlap, and then his attacking runs were on join the attack. With the defensive midfielder, Grealish in this place, very much that deep line playmaker role. Defensive behaviour is cut passing lanes into getting a lane press. Obviously, man mark doesn't work on this game. And then attacking support was stay back while attacking. The defensive position was cover centre. We didn't want him getting dragged out either side. That's the case for the players ahead of him also the likes of the fullback as well who was staying back and inverted and then position freedom was deep line playmaker to get him roaming around and picking up those pockets of space enabling us to effectively play it out from the back fits Jim then this was really fun and this is where this system does get very very fun and now he's attacking support he's staying back while attacking and supporting cross to stand near to the box for the cross and you might think that would make a very stagnant kind of position and you'd be right however were it not for this Positioning freedom on free roam, all of a sudden you're going to find him picking up so much positions, a lot of space, lots of areas around the pitch. And it creates such an, uh, just a really fun um, kind of system because it gets a lot of movement and fluidity within that midfield. Just helps it not to be as stagnant and fits him in particular was just really, really good in this career mode. Uh, Finally, his defensive position was on cover wing. With Berghaus, who was absolutely phenomenal, without a doubt, um, you know, a new love affair for me, as anyone who was watching the streams will know. Massive, massive fan. He was superb, carried us in this career mode. His defensive support was come back on defence and getting tracking back. His support on crosses was getting to the box with a cross. And his position freedom was drift wide. The reason why we got him on Ram and the reason why we have him on drift wide is because naturally... We talked about earlier how we've got this inverted fullback. So we need a bit of support for this winger on the right-hand side. And again, as I spoke about earlier, you'll notice similarities between this system and the Man City system of Pep Guardiola that we covered a, a couple of months ago. Because this is something we also do there. And it really does a good job of getting him into space, getting him on the ball more, supporting Kudus on the right. Very, very good. Um, and finally, his inceptions were on normal as well. So with the two wingers then... First things first, they have slightly differing roles. Now, with Popescu, who we did sign and was very good as well, he's on comeback on defence, and it's the same for Kudus on this right-hand side as well. They're also both on getting behind, of course, looking to penetrate that back line as much as possible with their runs and their pace. Um, but then the chance creation differs. The chance creation for Popescu is cut inside because he'll have back air creating the width overlapping down that left hand side. However, with Kudus, you don't have that because it's the inverted fullback on that side. So his chance creation is stay wide. And that is how, as early we spoke about in the tactics, we are going to create the width in this system because he'll stay wide on one side and back air will create the width as a wing back 
on the other side. And that's how you're going to be able to stretch opposition and get these guys in uh, lots of space in the wide areas. Remember, they are also both on getting to the box for the cross as well. Now, with Tadic, support runs is stay central. Again, not looking for him to drift out wide. We want him to be that focal point in attack. However, his attacking runs was false nine. And what this does is it creates space not only for the two wingers to run in behind, but also for Berghaus to run in behind as well, which occasionally he will do. And it's how he scored a lot of goals in this career mode series. What it also does is it really helps with that kind of possession system because as you'll notice, and as some people will have pointed out to me already, possession can sometimes feel a little bit stagnant on FIFA. Um, and using the likes of false nine helps to prevent that because you're just creating more movement you're getting more players closer to the ball it's helping you overload that midfield it kind of creates a diamond if you will because of the fact that he's dropping into midfield and now you've got that four there is an element of that so that was really fun as well and then it's a defensive support finally is on stay forward now we've spoken about also how i have implemented an attacking game plan now i didn't actually have this set in the career mode which i should have really but i tended to find myself constantly making these changes later on in the game if we were needing to press for a winner uh, so this time around with the attacking game plan defensive style goes up to constant pressure of course a drain on on fitness but you will only generally be using this later on in games um now it's also worth bearing in mind that you have to try and rest in possession if you can, um, which is easier said than done when you are trying to chase the game, but it is worth bearing in mind. The width goes up to 40 to supplement that press a bit more. We're just going to basically boost everything up a little bit in these tactical instructions. So the width goes up, looking to supplement that press, getting your players out wider a little bit earlier. Depth all the way up to 100 this time. A slight difference compared to 90, but again, when you're playing with defenders, like as we said here, 91 pace, 93 pace, etc., just very, very fast, you can still get away with playing a high line. Naturally, it is still a risk. Never without risk, but it, it does make it a little bit easier. The attacking width does also go up a little bit, just a peace of mind more than anything to help them get a little bit wider and stuff, create a bit more space, just taking that more risk. And then players in the box goes up to four this time not a massive change because we still wanted that element of trying to retain possession we don't want to go gunko and leave too much space in the central areas we want to be able to control it from those central areas the set pieces are also the same as well and we didn't make any changes to the uh player instructions but sometimes what i would do is um and it works with great effect is i would then put kudos into the striker position um, and then maybe put like Conta Sao on the right wing, for example. And then you've just got three real pacey, you know, high mobile players. Um, and that was just to kind of help with the press, help with getting him behind a little bit quicker, all that sort of good stuff. So that would round it off for this video then guys if you got any questions about the tactic don't hesitate to let me know go and watch a live stream series i would highly advise you just stick it on whilst you're playing fifa or anything else have it on in the background lots of fun really enjoyed doing it enjoyed interacting with so many of you some of you who are probably watching this video as well and hopefully we can do more down the road very very fun team and fun club to play as in general is ajax so that was really really cool really enjoyed this system if you got any feedback on the system, please don't hesitate to let me know. Don't forget to check out all my other series going on the channel right now. Um, that would be including my video games podcast. You can find it in the links in the description down below. You can find my Chelsea career mode series. You can find my tactic series. All that good stuff. Follow me on Twitter. All the links in the description. And of course, check out my Patreon if you want to see how this tactic ranks compared to all the other systems. On that note, we are going to round this one off there. So make sure to hit the subscribe button, ring the bell to get notifications for every time I upload. And until the next one, I will see you soon.